Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. The lights are bright, the stage is set, and it is showtime here at the Major Series of Putting. I'm Nikki Kay, he's Shane Bacon, and Shane, some of the best putters in the world out here competing not only for some serious bragging rights, but for some serious dough. Yeah, $250,000 up for grabs. The champion, I believe Las Vegas, $75,000 richer. That can change careers. That is a big, big check. Absolutely, 20,000 square feet, 18 holes here. How many truckloads of dirt? 120 truckloads of dirt, eight days to build this unbelievable stage. And we'll see some important putts. That's what this is about, making five footers. We'll see some great putts. We'll see some guys miss a few. And not only the Stroke Play Championship, but we've got a whole lot to look forward to. Yeah, we have professional golfers headed out, including Brad Faxon, one the of the goat best of putting of all time. <laughs> He's never missed a five footer that at least I have seen. And we also have a high roller event we'll see later in the show $11,000 to sign up. Some former professional tennis players, poker players, all out of here battling against each other. The excitement is just beginning now. Let's toss it on down to the third member of our broadcast team, Carla Marrero. Thanks, Nikki. I was able to watch four rounds with all of these players, and it was fun on the leaderboard to see who was rising up, who's going back, and it was back and forth, back and forth. And of course, everyone's trying to improve their stroke every round that they play. And hearing all the stories from the guy that sits 40 hours a week at his desk, takes his putter to work and, and practices for the tournament, to the IT guy that got here all the way from California because this was his lifelong dream, and he said he had to do this tournament. But it was so many great stories. And one of the great stories I got to hear was Taylor Montgomery. I wasn't going to play initially, and then my dad sent me a text. I, was, I play golf for a living right now. So he told me about this putting event. Putting's normally my strength. And he's like, uh, you should go play. And it's only $200 to try to qualify, and then you can win 75,000. I was like, yeah, right. That's not possible. When you come here and see it, it's it's actually the coolest thing in town, honestly, for a golfer. The scoreboard, the lights, it's like, it's an actual, like, legit event. It's basically like the biggest mini tour or state open you can play in, just to compete on, and putt. And it takes a day and a half. I love the way that it was run. I think, the, you know, what's really interesting is the course they set up. There's some really difficult holes. There's a couple easy holes. There's a little bit of a mix of both, which is important to give it some texture, if you will. You know, you don't want them all to be the same. And there's enough subtleties to them and you can move the tee boxes around. It's like, I mean, it's a dream come true. I was fortunate enough just to do well in the qualifying and make it through three levels of qualifying to get to here. So it worked out great for me. I didn't have to pay the big entry fee to get in. I was able to win the uh, regional qualifier and uh, get a free entry into this deal. So this is awesome. I'm really excited to be here. Well, in 1990, uh, I made a TV show. We played for uh, $1,000 a hole. I made uh, 13 skins and I won $13,000. I played, uh, I believe, 35 qualifiers all over the country. Chicago, uh, Houston, San Diego, Phoenix, something I love to do and I just, uh, I had to be a part of it. So I understand you played the game of your life on the fourth round, yeah. right? Maybe not scoring wise, but under the pressure and the circumstances to start from two under and move to seven under, under the pressure and pass and make the cut, you know, it was like my last chance to make the cut. So that's uh, one of my best games, I would say. You are 11 under right now, which is fantastic. And so please tell me a little bit of how you got here. Uh, I'm a pretty decent putter. I competed with a lot of uh, professionals. I heard comments like, if I could putt like you, I'd be making millions on tour. And I, I thought they were just joking. And so when this opportunity came, I, I said, there's no way I'm going to miss this. Uh, tell me this, what do you do for a living? I play poker. You play poker. It seems like poker and uh, playing golf uh, is kind of hand in hand, wouldn't you think? Very much so. Both <laughs> good gambling games. <laughs> Especially in Vegas, right? Absolutely. You know how to work under pressure. You know about the mental game of all of this. How, like what's going through your mind as you're, as you're playing? Honestly, just make the best stroke on each putt and, what, and just accept the results, whatever happens, happens. All right, the early rounds are out of the way. The field of 70 now down to a field of 30. Shane, what's it looking like? Well, they're chasing a local guy. Taylor Montgomery has been unbelievable thus far. He's 22 under par. He is six clear of the field. He's been rolling the rock. Montgomery, the man to beat. But you know what? We're going to get out of the way right now and kick off action here in Sin City. Let's take a look at round five. 
Just a quick look at the leaderboard. Taylor Montgomery, 22 under par. Six clear, Chris Johnson. Anders Olsen, one of the best putters in the world in third place. 30 players out on the golf course in round five as we check in on the action. Yeah, some of the stuff you can't miss on the second hole. Let's check in on Jeff Gibraltar. Yeah, this for a birdie, and really the front nine is where you need to get it going. Playing a little easier than the second nine, and he drops that one in. That moves him to 11 under par, right in the heart. All right, over on the seventh, Will Weissman. That's a birdie. A little slider left to right, hesitation, but it drops. Great putt. And he's three under after seven. All right, back to Gibraltar, who actually has a pretty interesting story. He had a tumor in high school, and basically the only sports he could play were soccer and golf. Really been impressive with the putter all week. Just trying to claw his way up this leaderboard, and that one goes in as well. All right, now the man to beat, Taylor Montgomery on the second hole. This is one of the easiest putts here at the Major Series of Putting Course in Las Vegas. Not a lot of movement. You see a lot of movement around these holes, but this is one you can be firm with. And you did just that, right in the heart. Not much of a reaction. We've seen a lot go in the center this week. All right. Coming up right behind Montgomery, Chris Johnson making a chase on that leaderboard. And let's keep the highlights going. Columbia, Missouri native Chris Johnson. He grew up playing golf, baseball, and basketball, but uh, clearly he's got something with the putter, huh? Hey, he's got the pants on as well, going <laughs> full golf on us. That one right in the middle. All right, let's check in on the ninth hole. We've got Connor Klein here. Shane, this is this is a toughie. Yeah, one of the most challenging holes on this opening nine. 55 feet from their putting from here. And one you're just trying to get down in two. You cannot make bogeys. Pars are fine. Birdies are great. Gorgeous. Right in the middle. That is from Reno, Nevada. He made that one. And back to the man in charge, Taylor Montgomery, 22 years old on the seventh. And just a beautiful stroke. You know, these are the holes you can make up ground or you can continue to extend that lead. And that's what he did right there at the seventh. Okay, Shane, it is fast and it is furious out here at the MSOP. It's my kind of golf. I like quick golf, and that's what they're doing here. Straight to business, no nonsense. We've got more action coming your way right after this break. And welcome back to the Major Series of Putting, sponsored by Buy On Footwear, One Shoe, Many Talents, the official shoe of the Major Series of Putting. And by Burke Putters, effective, easy-to-use solutions for putting on greens, the official putter of the MSOP. All right, we've got ourselves a stroke play championship, six rounds of golf, 250,000 up for grabs. But Shane, what sets this event apart from the others? Well, I think one of the things that helps speed play along is once you set that ball down on the designated areas to tee off from, you can't touch it again. You can't Ooh. mark it like you would a normal <laughs> golf event. You can't realign it. You see that a lot on these putting greens and other events. But this one's quick. It's rapid fire. Hit that putt, go up there, and tap in. Well, let's get back to action here as we join our golfers in round five. Taylor Montgomery, now just five clear, two under. You see Jeff Trebalter making his way up that leaderboard. He is five under in round five as he plays the 15th. This is a really, really short one and a must make for these players. He's on a roll. Cash is that one, moves to six under on his round. Let's check back in on Chris Johnson at the eighth. Man of many interests and talents. He actually uh, has started a vodka company. Helps with the putty nerves. In Sin City of all places. One curls in the right side, great roll there for Johnson. All right, so Anders Olsen, get this, he actually doesn't golf, he just putts. Just putts. This is perfect for him here in Las Vegas, the ninth, the long one. You can actually go both ways. You can take it left or right. He went right and snuggles it up close. Looks like a par. All right, back to Gibraltar on the 17th. This one's just 11 feet. This is one you feel like you have to make every time you go through this course. It's a tricky read, though. Not his best effort there. Short and left. That will never go in. So that'll be a par. He'll move over to 18. 
He'll just be kicking himself. You can see it in his face. And he's a poker player, so I'm I'm guessing he's got plenty of things to do here in Las Vegas. And he'll double down on the 18th. There's <laughs> our leader. He might not even be the best golfer in his family, Nikki. His dad, the head pro out at Shadow Creek. Money, right? The hardest golf course in Las Vegas to get on. He's gone through sectional qualifiers and U.S. Opens. He's a guy you do not want to play against or play for money. I can guarantee it as we get back to Gibraltar at the 18th, and this is the toughest putt on the golf course. Now, if you ask Gibraltar, he says his golf career actually ended because he was an average putter. He didn't become a good putter until two years after his professional golf career ended. You can see how tough that is. You've got to throw it way out right with a little bit of speed. And you're seeing a lot of balls end up right in this position. So that'll be a tap in par and a solid round. That is a round of six under. Just what you needed to do. Jumps all the way up to third place. Mild wave, maybe a bit disappointed on the 17th. And we'll flip over to the ninth. Our leader, who has been rock solid from this distance, is for a par. And he is just not dropping any shots. That's what he has to do. The head nod says it all. Quick look at the leaderboard. Montgomery up at top. 24 under, Chris Johnson, 19 under through the front nine. Anders Olsen, fourth place at 15 under earlier this week. Carla found out more about the MSOP and how golfers qualified to play here in Vegas. This major series of putting stadium course, the MSOP, was the brainchild of Guillaume Ballon, and we had a chance to talk with him. This idea actually come from uh, a game I played at uh, Oakmont. The members were uh, kind enough to organize this putting tournament under the lights on this gigantic green, and uh, 18 of us played 18 holes of putting and with a little wager. That was fun, and then I happened to win that tournament. And that specific moment made me realize that uh, putting levels the playing field and golf at night under the light is just so cool. So brought this idea to Guy Liberté, which is the founder of Cirque du Soleil. And here we are uh, two years later with people trembling over six footers in order to make a significant one. So uh, mission accomplished. Over the last uh, 10 days, we, uh, we host a 10 championship event. Uh, the entry fee varies from $1,000 to $11,000. There are several ways to enter this, this competition. You can either qualify through the qualifier that we did organize in 14 different markets. We, we organized 450 days of qualifiers uh, over, the last, over the last nine months. We wanted to go in golf courses to bring the best putter in this uh, championship event here in Las Vegas. Other ways is you can uh, direct register, pay the $1,000 and access uh, the main event. So um, I think we've brought the best putter uh, of North America here in Las Vegas for this uh, inaugural edition. Stick around, round five wraps right after this. Welcome back to the major series of putting. As you see this stunning 18 hole putting stadium here in the heart of Las Vegas, our stroke play championship is hitting the back nine here in round five of six. That awkward putting stroke you see there is Gunnar Benson, who is on fire. One of the rare birdies we've seen at the 18th all week long. Around a four under par to move up this leaderboard. And as we take a quick look at the leaderboard, if you look tied for fifth, Ricky Polonis and Scott Baldwin, but they're not the only guys cutting into the lead. Yeah, Chris Johnson, four under par. He's doing exactly what he needed to do to move up on Montgomery. We'll go to 14. This Johnson, this is a tough hole. This is a Jack Nicholas designed putting course. How nuanced is it? Well, you just saw it right there. You, these guys have greens books. These players have really been out here studying and practicing on these greens to know exactly where to miss it and still get one to go. And you saw it right there. That moves into five under. And take a look here at the 16th. You gotta throw this way out to the right and hope it comes back left. It's a good example of this incredible putting course we're seeing here in Las Vegas. And back to Johnson. Now, the players were telling me that basically the more rounds you get here at the major series of putting, the better advantage you have. Yeah, you're seeing it here in a big miss. You, you can't miss it at the 15th, and you can see his reaction. 15 and 17, you almost have to chalk up as birdies, and that will be one he's kicking himself in for sure as he was continuing to move up into that lead from Montgomery. All right, Gianfranco Guida over hey. here at the 16th. Got to say that one again. I like that. Gianfranco Guida. 
played professional golf in Australia, lives in Tempe, Arizona, refines his game in the summer heat. Now a door open for Montgomery on this short 15th. No doubt about it. Much needed birdie for our leader. And back to Guida on the 16th. He's going to tap it on in for par. Good two. You'll take two on 16, all six rounds. Probably make up a little ground on the field. All right, earlier we saw former mini tour player and poker player Jeff Gibraltar, who birdied here on number 15 to go to 16 under for the tournament and move into third. He spoke with our girl, Carla. So on the sixth round, what do you think's possible? Taylor's playing putting too well and Chris probably too far to reach, but third is for sure up in the air. Really grinding to try to get out front, put some pressure on the other guys. If the first two guys falter, which they won't, but if just, you never know, you just can't tell what's gonna happen. So anything's possible, but uh, just take it as deep as possible. Now Montgomery, you saw him pour that birdie in at the 15th, now at the tough 16th. No flaws really on the card for this young man. Oh, short miss. That's what you got to do at 16. Now Olsen at 17, so he can curl this one in. Believe it or not, when he is not putting, he likes to hit the slopes. A Sweden native. Tim Silverman, just cleaning up, one under par. Not his best work here in round five, but still in red figures. He'll handshake and get set for round six. Chris Johnson at the 17th. He's five under, this to get to six under on the round. Using every bit of energy on that putt. Another That's a birdie. birdie. Speaking of birdies, Anders Olsen, can he get one here on the 18th? Nice read. That moves him up to third place. A huge putt. About as much a reaction you'll see out of him. You get a birdie. You get a birdie. You get a birdie, Taylor Montgomery. Not so much. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> you got to smile when that happens. <laughs> A little trickery from Jack Nicholas. All right, Guida. He's good for it. That's a par, cleans that up at the 18th. Montgomery wrapping up his round right here as well. Made a late push. He was two under par, birdies 15. Backdoor birdie at 17. See if he can add another here at the 18th. Ooh. Liked it for a long time, but a good par. Always nice to make two at 18. And our leader with that late push remains atop this MSOP leaderboard. Four under for round five for Montgomery. Johnson, a chance to shoot seven under. He needed that one, didn't get it. Let's see, a bit frustrated. But still a solid round. I know we wanted to add another birdie here at 18, but he's got to be happy cutting into that lead for Montgomery. Finishing up round five with a six under. And as we take a look at that leaderboard, Johnson now within striking distance, just four shots back of Montgomery. Anders Olsen, a lot of ground to make up, sitting in third at 17 under. Gibraltar now in a tie for fourth after a strong finish by Ricky Polonis. And don't you go anywhere because when we get back, you're going to see highlights from our $240,000 high roller event. All right, this action's awesome, but we got to check out the MSOP high roller event, a high buy-in, a high purse, and donations to the One Drop Foundation. Yeah. We have names like Marty Fish, Daniel Nubranu, Eric Gagne, former Dodger players, big names out here putting for some big, big cash, $110,000 for the champion. Oh boy, a lot of green heavy hitters, high rollers. Let's check it out. It's fantastic. It's like uh, a golf tournament, only it's a putting tournament. And I think everybody knows when it comes down to tournament play, it really is about the nerves on the greens. So it was a 54-hole qualifying yesterday, and um, 
It was just a really interesting testing event. I loved it. Well, so one of the things that's interesting about the structure is, you know, you got stroke play to get into the match play, but then in match play, it's a lot different because now you're not only thinking about, you know, just making a putt. You're like, okay, he made his, now I got to be more aggressive with mine. Or he just made a three putt, so I just got to play careful. And that can play tricks on a lot of people who are not accustomed to adjusting like that. After a stroke play competition, former Major League pitcher Josh Beckett and tennis professional Marty Fish, along with Melrose Place star Jack Wagner and poker pro Daniel Negreanu, all qualified for the 16-player match play tournament. And two-time World Series champion Josh Beckett putted well in the early qualifying rounds, but was unable to hold off Richard Lochner, a course pro who traveled all the way from Sweden. I had to make a putt on 17 just to get on the cut number, and then I had to play my buddy Marty Fish in a playoff, and you know I ended up I ended up somehow winning the, the the playoff, and I think somebody withdrew, so him being the next guy, he got back in, and then he beat the number one seed. So you never know what can happen here in this uh, MSOP. Grano played well early in his qualifier, going on a run of birdies on the front nine. The six-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner brought his same temperament on the tables to the major series of putting course. In the quarterfinals, he ran into Lochner, who continued his strong play while Negreanu had some troubles with the dreaded three putt. So you got to be hot at the right time, but also, you know, it's important to just have that speed so you're not making any three putts. I made a ton of birdies, you know, during this tournament, and just way too many three putts. Taylor Montgomery was the first seed entering match play with the same kind of play we've seen in our stroke play coverage. However, he cooled off in his match with tennis professional Marty Fish. And it was Fish, the six-time ATP champion who stood strong through 18 holes, moving on to the quarterfinals. However, Marty lost to eventual finalist Eric Kerrigan when he missed his birdie attempt on the 18th to lose by just one. I think he's got a big future. I think, uh, you know, guys just got to learn about it. And, um, you know, sort of word of mouth is going to get around that this is a pretty cool event. There's a lot of prize money involved. I mean, 110 grand for the winner, it's real money. And a familiar face here at the MSOP, Jeff Travolter has been tough as nails, and the high roller was no exception right in the heart. In his first round of match, he went wire to wire with Francois Plamadon after Plamadon drained a birdie on number 18 to tie the match. It was Travolter who nailed his birdie putt for the victory. And Richard Lochner kept his stroke solid as he found himself in the final match for $110,000. This final pairing of Gibraltar and Lochner was a great match. Lochner took a one-stroke lead into the back nine with solid roll. This at the 11th. Lochner poured in another birdie putt with authority. He would move two up over Gibraltar who hasn't made a birdie or a bogey in this round until right now at the 14th. His first one on the card, can he make it two for two at the 15th? And he does it. Coming up clutch when he has to. Can Lochner cover? And he pours that one right in the center. Now it's 17, things are getting tight. A one-up lead for Lochner, but Gibraltar sneaks that in the right side. So can he maintain a one-shot lead with one hole to play? He cannot. That begs right. We'll go to the 18th, all square. Now Lochner, the hardest hole on the golf course. And for $110,000, he makes the birdie at 18, forcing Gibraltar to make this for its Lochner's prize. And the putter kick, so close to that big purse. But Lochner able to hold on despite the big play from Gibraltar. Six figures to the lefty. Great event, uh, great facilities. Uh, all the staff, everything was perfect. We have been here for two weeks, play all the, to uh, all the tournaments, and uh, I finally got it right. This is so professional. Everything is it's perfectly done. From the bar to the course to the everything, it's amazing. Come here, play. You can do it. If you can beat me, you can beat everybody over here. And guess what? We've got our final round of the MSOP Stroke Play Championship when we return. Welcome back to the MSOP. We've got a little break in the action right now, but there is still 
plenty of putting going on off the course. Yeah, some pressure packed situations. You can win $100,000. You make a 50 what? footer, you can win a hundred thousand bucks here. It's not the easiest putt in it the world, <laughs> but it's makeable. Yeah, let's go check out some of these cool skill games. Chris Johnson. What's happening? Now, I've, I saw you do this a bunch of times today. And actually, I saw you make it in a bunch of times as well. So uh, let me see you do this, because I know that you kind of explained to me what you're doing, but let yeah. me see you do this. So this is a fun little game that we can qualify through uh, playing this little course behind us. But so this, so putt, this, this putt here is this, for $200. This is for $200. If you make this one, you get to go try a 30-footer, which thousand. is just as hard for 1000 and then in the distance there, you get to try a 50-footer for 100 grand. 100 grand. If you can see the green, there's a very, very strong slope uh, that regresses towards the concrete down over there. And I've hit it maybe five times and then had seen maybe 100 people miss it. And everybody was taking this, this line up here. They were trying to firm it in. But as you can see at this cup, there's nothing to stop it. Even if it does hit the hole, it's gone. So I said, why don't I take it up here by this tee box for the next tee marker, see if I can get it to stop, and then have it come in sideways. We managed to mic it twice. So we'll see if we can make it right now, first take. I'm excited. Let's do this. Get a little lucky. Oh no, did I do it? Did I do it? Yes! First take! Woo! First take! And that is how it's done. Chris Johnson making his way out there. Round six underway here at the MSOP Stadium. And uh, here's some evidence of what can happen to anyone out there. This is Johnny Carino. Now he is 11 under par at this point playing the third. And everyone here is saying this is the toughest hole on the golf course. This and the 18th go back and forth. So that was his first putt. A lot of people down in this area, and that's okay. You know what, it's a good thing though. His wife, Amelita, and his daughter, Diana, are out there supporting him. Well, I hope they had their eyes closed right here. Uh, went to tap it in, and that's gonna go back to where he started with the second. So now, things have gone south, and south quickly. Now his fourth shot. This is painful. Just a reminder of what can happen on some of these tricky holes. Now putting for a five, leaves that woefully short. So tap in for six, can he make this one? And guys, you know what's about to happen. This is headed back down to where you tee off on four. So this is a tap in for an eight, a sex tuple bogey for Carino. Yikes. Here's Carla Marrero with coverage from the MSOP All-Pro event. Thanks guys, we're here at the All-Pro event. And playing in the event are names like John Cook, Brad Faxon, who helped with MSOP, and we also have Tommy Armour. But let's hear from them what they really think about MSOP. Anybody can do this. There, you know, you have your long drivers that can hit 400. I'm not going to go out and be able to find 120 yards of distance. But anybody that can learn how to putt can come out and, and, and play this and learn how to putt, learn how to read greens, and, you know, learn what a good stroke is and what you know makes solid contact, consistent contact. So anybody could really enjoy something like this. We wanted to talk about the concept, how this came to be, how long did this take? Well, it's taken a while. It's funny, I was playing a senior tour event up in Quebec City outside of Montreal a couple hours, and I was playing with a, a former hockey player that I knew, Art, Art Bruno, who was from Montreal, was involved with the tournament, was friends with Guillaume Balland, who has helped to start this. We just hit it off. Then he calls me a year later and says, well, I've got this friend that's doing this putting tournament. You want to be involved? And I'm like, well, if it has to do with putting, yes, but <laughs> what does it mean? And we went, and, and really, at the PGA show two years ago, and just introduced ourselves and said, this is our idea. And everybody kind of was like, putting tournament, yeah, right. <laughs> and now when you see it, you're like, this is really, really cool. And everybody that we talked to two years ago was like, I underestimated what you guys did. I like the concept. I like the music. I like the lighting. It's at night. I like it all. OK, any of these holes difficult? Any one particular one? Uh, that third hole was uh, 
a little interesting. I was playing with Cookie and Cookie four putted that one right before I got to do it. So yeah, there's some tricky little holes out there. The ball moves and their greens are quick. Well, it, it can only get better, you know, and we've got a week long. There's 10 different, you know, events or 10 different competitions where we're going to see some, some big money events with some amateur guys. And we're going to see people get nervous, you know, and, and you've got all walks of life, lives here. You know, you got people that play professional golf daily. Uh, people that are aspiring tour players, players that um, play professional mini golf or putt putt golf, which right. is crazy. And then there's people that are working, you know, regular jobs that have traveled, like you said about Rainey, that's came come here from Texas. Yeah. Thanks, Carla. Well, after the initial qualifying rounds of the All Pro, it was the Old Pro from Houston, Texas. Rainy Statham leading the field. Check out those shoes. Heading into the match play rounds with 16 competitors entering the match play bracket, it was the putting legend, the GOAT, Brad Faxon, who hosted the All Pro Championship, winning two matches to make it to the final foursome of the event. Faxon finishing in a solid third, winning the consolation match. Meanwhile, Cole Nygren, the big winner, taking home the $15,000 first place check. Stay with us, we're gonna have full coverage of the final round of the Stroke Play Championship when we return to the MSOP. Welcome back to the major series of putting here in Las Vegas. We're about to kick off round six. Taylor Montgomery after round five, still the guy to beat, but we saw some players making moves on up the leaderboard. Yeah, Jeff Gibraltar shot at six under par. Chris Johnson shot six under par, and that lead was six going into round five. Now it's just four. You're saying there's a chance. Four shot lead, 18 <laughs> holes to go. So you're saying there's a chance. Now we're about to kick off that final round, but before we do, let's go ahead and check on in with Carla. Well, we've got Lane Flack here, of course, six-time World Series of Poker Championship bracelet winner. I want to hear what, what did you tell him that helped him, you think? Well, there's, there's some physics to the game, and when you're playing on turf as opposed to grass, and, you know, Taylor's a superstar. He's played golf at a high level, but I have the ability to walk around and see what everybody's doing, where the misses are, and, you know, he's, he's a great student. So when you come back and say, listen, they're trampling it down, the greens are moving faster, tighten the lines, he, he does it without having to go practice. A lot of the other players I've seen struggled with it and, and needed help, but his, his marriage from the club to the ball was as smooth as, smooth as silk. All right, back to you, Nikki. Thanks, Carla. Let's take a quick look at the current standings. Our leaders about to start round six. Taylor Montgomery holding that four shot lead over Chris Johnson. Anders Olsen holding down third. We've got a four way tie for fourth. Chris Johnson four shots back and we'll need to get off to a hot start here in round six. This at the first, this is very makeable. Just like that, curls it in the left side and a wave to the crowd. All right, Gianfranco Guida. He was raised north of Toronto. In his spare time, you could find him playing pool or in the gym. And that one headed south. About six inches down for birdie. And our leader. Is it safe to say he takes after his father? His father's a gutsy guy. I've heard many rumors that you never want to put any amount of money up against Monty Montgomery. Taylor looks like he's followed in those footsteps. A tap in par to start. All right, let's check in on Jeff Gibraltar at the fourth. Made his move in round five. Even par here in round six. Not anymore. That is a great birdie. His front nine just plays a little easier. These guys will have to get off to a hot start if they want any chance to catch Taylor Montgomery, and you see a little sportsmanship there from Anders. Back with Johnny Carino. Looks like he's uh, rebounded a little bit after that tough go at the third. We saw that eight he made at the third. This one is going to miss low, so a disappointing round six for Carino. And he'll fall short just of making some money here at the MSOP. He'll be having Vegas nightmares of three. I can guarantee it. Speaking of the third, we'll head over there and Johnson. Guess what Johnson's fuel of choice is? I'm going to guess vodka. Smoothies. Smoothies? He is pretty skinny. I could see that. You've got to keep this right. If it's left of the hole at any point, it will go all the way down to the fourth tee. That wasn't left to anything. That was perfect. One of the rare birdies you'll see at three. Confident guy right there. 
And Shane, it's worth mentioning guys like Andy Shin, who may not be in the hunt for the championship, but still have the chance to make some serious dough. Yeah, serious dough, three and four thousand dollars, depending on if they finish in that top 15. That's a good trip to Vegas. Really good trip. Speaking of a guy that's having a fun visit to Las Vegas, this guy, Chris Johnson, you go back to back. Ooh. Ooh. Just goes begging on the low side. Good roll, similar reaction. All right, back to Guida. You know, he uh, precedes all his putting rounds with a unique stretching routine, something we might want to take into consideration. Considering my stroke, not a bad idea. Stretching, huh, for putting? Why not? As long as it works. Lochner. This guy has owned the 18th hole. He has owned it. Maybe to be lefty is better on this final hole, breaking right to left. Pours that one in. That's a good finish. Should be right around that 15 cut line as we go to Gibraltar. Birdie. The body language. The Bama hat. And he's two under on this round. All right. Stayed him in his shoes on the 18th, and he can stay in the running for some money. Even with the miss. Yeah, and Nikki, that putt would be worth some $2,000 if he was able to cash it. But he's right on the cut number as of now. This guy is not. This guy's trying to win. Ooh, the long miss. But still up atop the leaderboard. So here we go. That unique stroke from Statham, and he gets it to go. So 14 under has him inside that top 15 as of now. Redford Bobbitt, born and raised in Munich, Germany, on the 17th. And that back door for Birdie. He's going to go into the top 11. A good putt by him. Our leaders heading into the back nine at the MSOP Stadium course. We have the final holes when we return. Welcome back to the Major Series of Putting, sponsored by Bion Footwear, One Shoe, Many Talents, the official shoe of the Major Series of Putting. And by Burke Putters, effective, easy-to-use solutions for putting on the greens, as the official putter of MSOP. And while we are away, tons of action as the leaders moved into the back nine. And this just a moment ago, first birdie of the day for Taylor Montgomery. He needed it. Got to 27 under, a man that has been red hot in round six. Gibraltar, another one. Gets that to go. He's trying to claw back that lead from Taylor Montgomery. Who's just getting started. So to follow him up at the 12th, this for back-to-back -back birdies. That one would have gone in a thimble right in the heart for Taylor Montgomery. Now over at 13, Gibraltar. Can he birdie again? We what might a, need a heat check out here at the MSOP. NBA Jam style, five under on his round. So before we catch up with our golfers on the back nine, let's take a quick look at the leaderboard. Montgomery's holding a three-stroke lead over Johnson with Gibraltar comfortably in third. You can see there, 28 under, 25 under as we go out to Guida. Who is tied for fourth with Anders Olsen here on the 17th. Lots of money up for grabs here on these late hole putts right in the middle. He likes it. So does the crowd. All right. The native of Sweden, Anders Olsen. He's got a big green reading book he looks at on every hole, which would be surprising to some, but a guy that is known around the world as a great putter. He's got his process, and that one's right in the middle. Now Back jo to Johnson on the 14th. This is for par. Now, Shane, what's the most difficult stretch of holes here at the MSOP? Well, you really have that middle stretch on the opening nine. When you get to this point, you're thinking birdie at 15 and 17 for sure, as Ricky Polonis is surely thinking. Those blue shorts. So those socks and shorts match. We have a fashion alert for Polonis. Oh! Just short. Really struggling on those final holes. 
back over at Chris Johnson. Just at 15. This is the hole we're talking about. you got to make it here if he wants any chance at this trophy. That's a birdie. He's fine with that. No sweat at all. And back to Polonis. We saw him struggle one hole ago, and it's definitely the hangover effect here in Vegas. A two putt there at least keeps him in that top 15, so he'll at least leave with a check, not the check he was hoping for. And oh. Wheel starting to get a bit squeaky for Taylor Montgomery. Misses at 15, and we got ourselves a ball game with three holes to play. He's not happy with it. Gibraltar. The 16th. Ooh, that is way left. But still looks like it'll be a par for Jeff Gibraltar, who has made the move of all the players really in this final round, has jumped all the way up to third place. That's worth just about $30,000. You think about a, a poker player, a mini tour player, that is a chunk of change. He's cruising right now. We're uh, checking in with Guida here on the 18th. Wants to finish his final round strong, and it's not going to happen. A chance with an uphill putt for a par, and now he sits right in that fourth and fifth position as we check in on Gibraltar. Tap it in there at par. So he's got 17 and 18 left. Par, par, and he'll finish in third. Guida. A par for him. Guida and Olsen are in a neck-and-neck -neck battle for fourth place. And what's the cash differential on that one? I mean, you're looking at some $9,000 difference between fourth and fifth place, 7,000s between fifth and sixth. It's crazy the amount of money one putt can make. Speaking of one putt, that is our leader. Montgomery, not the putt he wanted. Gibraltar doing his thing. And Montgomery now, just a tap in here, short little putt at 16 for par. Oh, a rare second miss from Taylor. We haven't really seen him do that all day. That's going to be a bogey, and now things are really, really tightening up atop this leaderboard. This is where the drama gets juicy. Okay, so if you're Chris Johnson, what's going through your mind right now? Well, you're thinking, I just got handed a gift. If I make this, I'm now tied for the lead with two holes to play. And he likes it. I mean, it's a good roll there but not good enough. But 16's a hole you're going to take a two on and walk to 17. He's really, really owned the 17th. Anders Olsen. Ooh. And uh, what what's he playing for? Well, I mean, Olsen's playing for fourth position. It looks like third's all but locked up. Chris Johnson in with his two at 16. So we'll head to 17. One shot back of Taylor Montgomery. This 17th is a short, short putt. He's got a chance to tie the lead. Anders again on the 18th. And he's got to make this if he wants to finish in fourth alone. Yes. And he does just that. And the fist pump. That is a $5,000 putt, a total purse of 20625 for Anders. And these two guys are playing for $75,000 for first place. Chris Johnson first up at 17. Money, literally. And a huge putt for Chris Johnson, potentially tied for the lead with one hole to go. But first, we'll go over to Jeff Gibraltar, who has done everything he's needed to do in this round six. Lags it up there close. He will finish in third alone, worth a lot of dough. All right, back to Montgomery. He's got to make this to maintain the one-shot lead. So I missed that short putt at 16. Not here at 17, right in the heart. Ice in his veins. Young man, impressive. One hole to go. He'll have a one-shot lead, meaning Chris Johnson will all but have to make it here at 18. Gibraltar taps in. For, for third. Just about $30,000 he won for third position. What a final round. All right. To the 18th. Montgomery. If he makes it, it's over. He's got his whole family here watching him. I spent some time talking to his younger sister and her friend. They are certain he can pull this off, but he's coming up just a little bit short. Maybe a little bit of a lag, knowing he has that one-shot lead, and 18's a tough one to make, so 
He'll have to sit and watch. Chris Johnson makes it. We're going to a playoff. And he's just been lights out all six rounds here at the MSOP. Yeah, we've really only seen him, you know, step up one time, and it was on the 16th here. Chris Johnson, five under on his round today, but he's got to get to six under on his round if he wants to get to a playoff. This one's got to go. You can feel the pressure in the air. He's got enough steam. Just oh, short. But you know what? Johnson will finish with 42,500. Really a valiant effort considering it was round six and he had a big, big, big hill to get over. But it was Taylor Montgomery that was dominant through six rounds, made that big putt at the 17th, and he will walk away one shot clear of Chris Johnson. Recently graduated from college at UNLV, and now he's got $75,000 coming his way. In case you missed it, here's some of the drama that played out over the last four holes. Yeah, Chris Johnson was three back at that point, drops that in for a birdie. Taylor Montgomery on the 15th. That one slides by. So now the lead, just two for Taylor Montgomery. And here he goes again. A rare miss, and that leaves the door open just a sliver for Chris Johnson. When he poured this in, he had to be thinking a really good chance to at least get into a playoff. Montgomery had to make it 17 to maintain a one-shot lead with one hole to play after missing a couple of shorties. And as the competitor he is, he does it. So we go to the 18th. Montgomery needs a par here. Yeah. A birdie would be nice. Birdie would have locked it up, but just lagging, just knowing that 18's tough. A par for Montgomery, making Johnson knock this one in for a birdie to force a playoff. Chris Johnson falling just short of the stroke play championship, but Taylor Montgomery, the man of the night, let's send it on down to Carla. I felt like I was hitting good putts and playing as good as I could, and I was staying as calm as I could. That was one thing that I wanted to do is remain calm, and uh, but it made it tough to do because he kept on making putts and it you can only stay calm for so long um, but 17 was a big putt I knew I had to make it I I told myself in my head before he going to putt it that he was going to make it which made it easier for me once he did make it so I could get up and actually just get up there and stay calm and make the putt okay so thank high five much. of course thank you so much all right thank you Back to you, Nikki. Thanks, Carla. Well, Shane, I have to say, what a unique experience, a unique venue at the Major Series of Putting. Yeah, come to Las Vegas with a chance to really earn some serious cash. And this is something I think that's really gonna stick around in golf and in sports, a chance for qualifiers all around the country. You could get into the MSOP. I feel like this stadium could be here for years to come. I do hope so. For Shane Bacon, I'm Nikki Kay. Thanks for watching the Major Series of Putting.